Kendo or Brunei. It's a big job for a little plane. Three million square kilometres, 40% of Australia, serving a population of 370,000 people across the Northern Territory, the north of Western Australia, South Australia and far north Queensland. Hello, I'm Lee Hatcher. I'd like you to meet Phil Zamangias, the only flying Bible man in the world. Phil works as the Bible Society's flying Bible man, reaching out to outback and urban communities across northern and central Australia. He's the only full-time Bible advocate across this vast area. It is quite daunting because it's a very large area that I travel around, but of course it's great to meet up with the people of God wherever I go, um, worshipping, fellowshipping together, and most importantly of all, gathering around the Word of God and grappling with what it says and how to apply it in their lives. Groot Island is about a three-hour flight from Darwin. It's located in the Gulf of Carpentaria, where mission work has been underway since 1921. The Flying Bible Man's plane is loaded with a rich variety of scripture materials across a wide range of needs. For the last three decades, a project has been underway here, translating the Bible into the local Anandiliakwa language, coordinated by CMS missionary Julie Waddy. There they are. That's the Great. Wonderful. And these, these are the covers. Oh, the same covers. Okay. Great. There's a strong Christian community here, keen to engage with the Bible. Children can colour those ones in. Stories about Jesus. Stories that Jesus told. Rob Haynes is another CMS missionary on Groot. This is a true partnership. Rob values Phil's fellowship and the treasures he brings on each trip. People appreciate it because they get to see Bibles and new productions that are often very, very helpful out here. We go through Bibles very quickly and people are, are wanting to buy Bibles, Bible covers and video, videos of biblical things and so on. So it's always great to see Phil come. We don't do anything by ourselves. Uh, all the work in the top end, in the outback, is done in partnership with our mission partners who may be churches, uh, mission organisations, or even lay people who are active Christians in their communities. And so we don't do anything on our own. We go into the communities, we ask people what they need, and we apply solutions to their needs according to the resources that the Bible Society has. And it's important that the Bible Society stays at the cutting edge of both culture and technology. Phil's brought this tiny computer memory card for Carolyn with all the electronic resources for his Outback ministry. With the click of a mouse, he can bring up any of the text, pictures or audio so it can be translated. And it's got a picture about a, and a story. Now this one's in English, but what you can do is then you can put in here, you can type in or you can copy the Island de Liaqua. Phil has a vital role in isolated communities, but his ministry also extends to the urban life of Northern Australia, introducing Christ and encouraging all sorts of people to engage with the living Word of God. Like the commanding officer of a contingent of 450 army soldiers on their way to Iraq, Phil presented 100 Bibles to them. He's also been involved in the recording of the Bible into indigenous languages and is a familiar, friendly face at the Nongalinya College at Darwin helping students out with scripture materials. He's always seen around here and brings people from the Bible Society and we find having Phil here with us is a great support. And the Anglican Bishop of the Northern Territory highly values Phil's ministry. Well, Northern Territory Outback Ministries really gives uh, an opportunity of reaching across the Territory in a way that um, we don't have to some of the remote mining camps and remote cattle stations. And I think Phil, because he has a plane, can land there and um, take opportunities of sharing scriptures and, and just other sorts of ministries. So in that way, he's, uh, he's able to do something that's beyond the reach of what we can ordinarily do. One plane, one pilot, and a ministry admired and appreciated by Phil's fellow pilots, like Wayne Lindsay, who flies for the Mission Aviation Fellowship. When we have special occasions at Numbawa, um, just give Phil a call and he's, he's out there with Bible resources, etc. Et 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 and this is what it's all about. In the grounds of St Andrew's Church, Groot Island, Rob Haynes and Phil take part in a Bible study with a group of locals who treasure 
having the Bible in their own language of Anandiliakwa. I couldn't stop winking at that because when I read in, uh, in my language, I could understand what God was speaking to me. And I thank God for that. I believe that there is no hope outside of uh, the Christian faith and Christian people really must ground their faith in the Word of God. I've seen in communities throughout the top end the only real transformation that occurs is when people understand their relationship with God through Christ and putting into practice what the scriptures say in their lives is not only transforming for them personally but also for their whole community. To us as Christian people, especially to me, I'm not ashamed of what what God is calling me to do. So, to me, as a, an Aboriginal woman, I'm not ashamed to do God's word. That gift that God has given me, um, I shared with the other people there reading it too. Yeah. Sharing God's gifts to other people. Lives and communities right across Northern Australia transformed by the living word of God. And I've been Christian for many, many years. I'm still alive. Mm. Because I know, I know where I'm going, mm. and everybody knows this Christian people. Mm. So make sure, don't stop, just go. Mm -hmm. Follow the same road. I'm very moved by what I see. I've, I've often been close to tears when I hear what the people are saying. Um, how they are understanding new concepts from scripture that they didn't know before and then they ask themselves what does this mean for us how should we then live and it's just great to see the lights go on